Hello, everyone. Hello. I'm DJ. I'm the owner of Wabi Sabi. This is our comedy night with Jason and his co co crew of comedians. Uh, I'd like to uh, go over a few ground rules. This is an adult comedy show. If this bothers you, I fucked your mother so hard last night she left the money on the dresser when she ran out my fucking place this morning. You were in the wrong room. <laughs> the F-bomb will be dropped. Uh, hecklers, if you heckle the comedians, I touch you on the shoulder and I say, get the fuck out of my place. There's our F-word again. Uh, I'd like to happy birthday to Sarah. Let's wave Sarah. Yeah. She's hot, sexy, and sizzling. And yes, opposites attract. Jason, the, that's her man back there by the door. Yes, she has it. <laughs> and uh, so you guys have a good time, and uh, here you go. Here's Jason. Hey. hey. What's up, Wabi Sabi? Nice. Good to see y'all this evening. I love this place, man. I love Wabi Sabi. Um, I am Jason, and uh, is that Echo okay? Is that, is that, okay. Okay. All right. Well, uh, it's, uh, I got seven great comedians here for you guys tonight. I'm going to put on a hell of a fucking comedy show for you since he just already went and said it. So um, let's go ahead and get it going. My name is Jason. I am a comedian. And uh, it's fun being a comedian. Like, uh, I get to do a lot of things. I get to sit around and smoke weed and, uh, and drink and write down jokes I think are funny, right? It's a good job, you know? But there's like one thing I really hate about doing comedy. Or one really, I, I hate it. And that's when I meet somebody, or I see somebody I haven't seen in a long time, and they're like, hey man, uh, what you up to now? And I'm like, man, I do stand-up comedy now. And they're like, oh, tell me a joke, man. And I'm like, that's kind of messed up. Because this is the only job you can have when somebody learns that you have this job, they want you to do it right then. You know what I mean? Like, I don't meet an old friend from high school. I'm like, hey man, what you up to now? He's like, I'm an accountant. I'm like, do my taxes, bitch. Now. Like, I don't see a guy I just met at a bar. I'm like, hey man, what do you do? He's like, I'm in a band, man. I'm like, well, sing, douchebag. Now. Simple man. Acapella. I want to hear that shit. Now, it's fun being a comedian. You need to talk about stuff that's going on. We just had the Oscars. Yeah? Anybody see the Oscars? Yeah? Yeah, it was kind of whack. I was watching the, the, the red carpet, and I fucking hate the red carpet, all right? There's always somebody like Ryan Seacrest talking to George Clooney about what he's wearing, you know? And he's like, hey, Mr. Clooney, I gotta ask you, uh, what are you wearing today? And he's like, well, my tux is Gucci, my shoes are Versace, and my hair is laced with the tears of unicorns. <laughs> and I'm thinking, I can't afford that shit. Why are they interviewing people? I don't, I, I don't have that money. I can't afford that. I need to interview like George Fooney from like Dinwiddie. Ask him what he's wearing, you know? Hey, uh, Mr. Fooney, I gotta ask you, what are you wearing tonight? Well, my shirt is from NASCAR, my pants are from my brother, and my shoes are off. <laughs> so I changed the channel on the red carpet shit, changed it, and I got to that uh, Extends commercial. Y'all see that? To make your dick bigger, right? I, I don't need it, you know what I mean? It's like a wrestler holding a bowling ball down there. I don't. I'm good. <laughs> but, I'm watching the Extends commercial, and the spokesman for Extends is Jimmy Johnson. Which makes a lot of sense. He's named after two dicks. <laughs> you know what I mean? What's next? Like, Dick Trickle could be the spokesman for Flomax? Like, it's a NASCAR joke, people. Catch him. <laughs> <laughs> So I was watching TV, I switched the channel, news came on, weatherman's on, he's like, we got a 100% chance of rain on Thursday. And I'm thinking, that's quite an oxymoron, right? You can't really have a 100% chance. Like, it's either 100% gonna happen or a chance, you know what I mean? It's not the same, it's still a chance. Like, there's a 100% chance I'll pay my cable bill on time. Like, not 100% chance, you yeah. know? 100% chance I'll pull my dick out in church. Like, I'm not, but, you know, 100% chance. 100% chance I'll have a three-way with Megan Fox and Betty White. 
Don't hate. <laughs> I'd have a baby right now with Betty White if I could, if it was physically possible. But it's not. And you know why? Because I'm 32 years old and I don't have a baby. That's crazy, right? All my friends have babies. I don't. People come to me like, what's wrong with you, man? What, you hating on babies? What, you hate babies? I'm like, nah, first off, I need more than $50 in my checking account to have a baby, all right? <laughs> first off, first off, I'm like, well, you hating on babies? I'm like, no, I used to be a baby, as a matter of fact, you know? The best time of your life is when you're in your mother's womb, you know? You got everything you need. You got a water bed, you got a buffet, you got cable, you know what I mean? You got everything you need. And then people were like, people that don't have kids are always like, hey man, hey, hey, if you want to practice for a baby, just get a dog. And I'm like, that's not the same. People who think dogs are like babies, it's not the same. You know what I mean? For instance, you know how hard it is to get a kid to shit outside? <laughs> it's hard. You know? You smack a dog around a little bit, no shit outside. You know what I mean? Like, if a dog runs away, he's coming back. If a kid runs away, that shit's 50-50. Like, you don't, you don't know. Like, if a dog throws up, he cleans it up. If a kid throws up, you gotta clean it up. You know, it's those differences. It's differences. I actually have, uh, I have two dogs. I have one dog named Jazz. She's a German Shepherd. She's a little crazy. She's kind of smart. I don't know. Anybody here has dogs, does this? My dog like tries to enunciate human syllables to me while I, when I walk in a room and it sounds like a human word. Like I walk in and she'll be like, hello. And I'm like, hey, what's up? And she'll be like, what's up? I'm like, what's up? How you doing? I came home last night drunk as shit at four in the morning. You know what she said? Where were you? I'm like, guys, isn't that just like a bitch? Like, <laughs> It's horrible, I love women. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. Oh, man. I was driving yesterday, and I saw the gas station prices. Who's pissed off about that? Anyone? Yeah. I am really pissed off about that, man. First off, I was really high when I was driving. Like, you ever been so high you forget that you're high and you wonder why you're in such a good mood? <laughs> right. Like, this is where I was, right? And I pull up in the gas station, I see 3.35. I think it's like the, the clock at the bank telling me what time it is. It's like, no, it's actually 1.30, man. <laughs> so I pull up in the gas station, man, I'm high as shit. I get out of the car and I, I get the, the gas gun, I put it in my car and I'm clicking it. And I'm clicking it and there's nothing. And I'm high as shit, and I hear this voice from the heavens. It's like, number four, you must prepare. And I'm like, what? Did God just tell me to open a door and do what he say? Like, I don't, I'm high. So I hear it again, number four, you must prepay. And I'm like, what? And some guy in the corner is like, hey, dickhead, you got to prepay. And I'm like, oh, shit, I forgot to prepay. So I walk up in the gas station, and it's just me or gas station out of control. Like, I can't tell if it's a gas station or a Walmart, you know? I walk in, I got, like, DVDs on my left, glass figurines on my right, wool hats in the corner, lady giving out cheese, you know? <laughs> bicycles hanging down. So I go up to the, the clerk, I'm like, look, man, look, I just want some gas, man. And that, that coffee table right there, I love that <laughs> coffee table, and that triple extra large white t-shirt so I can tie it down to my Hyundai. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I am Jason Klingman. I'll be your MC for the rest of the evening. Woo! Yeah. We have some great comedy coming for you guys tonight. Your first comedian coming to the stage. Originally from Philadelphia, now he lives in Richmond. He's here for you guys. Give it up for a very funny Pat Dalton. Bobby Savi, how you doing tonight? Woo! There's some excitement? I want to start off by telling you guys I saw the craziest shit on the news the other day. Apparently... Oh, I'm getting to it, sweetie. <laughs> Apparently a woman in New Zealand got a stroke from a hickey she received. Did anyone see this? A fucking stroke from a hickey? First of all, how horny do you have to be 
to paralyze the whole left side of a bitch's face with a hickey. Second, second of all, the suction power on this dude. Seriously, she should be thanking her lucky stars homeboy didn't go down on her. Cause if he did, he'd have sucked the bitch's uterus out and killed her. Now look, don't get me wrong, I did say homeboy. I'm not being racist, nor am I implying a black guy did this. Because we all know a black guy ain't going down on any woman. I don't care how fat and white she is. I don't care if that snatch is doubling as a Hennessy and Newport dispenser. Bro, they ain't going down there. Ah! So you guys excited about the seasons changing? Seasons? Yeah. yeah. What season's upon us, sir? Spring. Spring, no. Spring. NASCAR season! Yeah. I know you Petersburgians love you some goddamn NASCAR, don't you? Yeah. Me, personally, I don't get it. Maybe it's because I'm from the North, I wasn't raised with it. I don't hate it, I just don't get it. It seems like to me the drivers are constantly changing their cars. Like, for instance, Dale Earnhardt Jr. He drove, what, the uh, Budweiser, then the National Guard, then the Amp car. And his father, his father drove the Wrangler car, the BF Goodwrench car, and now he drives Gravedigger. So, I mean... <laughs> I'll tell you, the show was going great. He was making fun of the colors, but then he talked about Senior! God damn! Uh, but I am really excited about the seasons changing because I am I hate the winter time God do I hate the winter time hate it more than anything and the reason why I hate it is I always feel colder than anyone else my friends are always like I don't know why you're so cold you're covered head to toe in body hair you're like a goddamn Sasquatch ha <laughs> ha it is true though I am covered head to toe in body hair and to give you guys an idea of how covered I am my back looks more and more like Freddie Mercury's chest every single day. Minus all the semen knotted in the hair, of course. Maybe not all the semen. You gotta have some fun, right? Tell me Freddie Mercury is. Lead singer Queen was a flaming homosexual. That's why he has semen. Oh. Uh, I was uh, recently in a strip club, and uh, I know you're surprised because I don't look like the type of guy that would hang out in a strip club, but I've been in a couple in my days, and um, I came to the conclusion, the guy who works the DJ booth at the strip club sounds the exact same no matter where you are in the world, right? You know exactly what I'm talking about. Coming to the stage is Amber! Amber's a dirty girl, she needs to be cleaned off with some of those ones, so remember fellas, two for one shower show going on! In the Boom Boom Room with Trixie and Chloe. Right? That's exactly how he sounds. You know how I know they all sound the same? Because I was in Tijuana, Mexico. Right? Dude sounded the exact same. Only in Spanish. You gotta, you gotta have an amber. Conchita Morita Sonoto Cototo in La Sala de Boom Boom. Those poor Uno. Trixie E. Chloe. <laughs> Taco or something. You get the idea of what he said. Now, I started really thinking about these guys. I mean, these guys work all day. They work all night. They gotta take their work home with them. They gotta have kids. I mean, the only thing that keeps them going is meth, probably. They gotta be at home, like... <laughs> to the living room, it's Rachel. Rachel's a dirty girl, fresh from soccer practice. Taylor, get your sister into the downstairs bathroom, and remember, fellas, two-for-one shower show going on in my downstairs bathroom with Taylor and Rachel. I mean, that's probably how their daughter's like, Daddy! Uh-oh, honey, sorry, I thought I was at work. Oh, Daddy. Now here's a line of cocaine, give me a blowjob. Oh, 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 you're not a stripper. Yet. Yeah, that yeah. took that one too far with the incest. My wife will tell you, she's like, you always take that one too far. Um, let me tell you a little bit about myself. Believe it or not, I am 100% Irish. My parents are directly off the boat. 
And uh, it's got its positives, but it has its negatives. You know, positives, we're able to drink massive amounts of alcohol. It's got its negatives, though. Number one being sunlight, that's a pretty big one. And number two, the Irish curse. You guys familiar with the Irish curse? It's one step above the Asian curse. About 17 stories below the African gift. You look like you're confused. <laughs> Asians have tiny dicks. Irish guys have a little bit bigger, and black guys have gigantic hog cocks. No? So, oh, sometimes? Sometimes? Alright, that's, that's just what I felt, heard, heard. Um, I've been hearing this term a lot, foodie, F-O-O-D-I-E. Have you heard this term? Foodie? <laughs> She's like, mm, I ain't heard that shit. <laughs> um, it's a term people in the food industry and restaurant industries use to explain their love of food and that how much they know about food and all this. But I've been hearing it being misused. I hear a lot of fat people use it. <laughs> like, oh, I'm a foodie, I love this, I love that. It's just a way for them to cover up their gluttonous behavior about being overweight, and I kinda just wanna call them out for what they are. Look, you're not a foodie, you're a fatty. Look, I'm not a drinky, I'm a fucking drunk, okay? And there's two things I can guarantee you about me being a drunk. Number one, if you have a party with an open bar, I'm fucking sleeping over, okay? And number two, I'll probably pee in your hamper. Okay, there's two things I can guarantee about you being a foodie. Number one, you're a pretentious, overweight a-hole, okay? And number two, I'll probably pee in your hamper, okay? Um, my wife got me a uh, birthday gift. I just turned 32. Yeah. Me and Clayton, 32, right, brother? Yeah. I just turned 32 last week, and my wife got me, um, uh, what was it called? Apple TV. You hook it up, your Wi-Fi runs through your TV, you can watch YouTube, Netflix, all that shit. It's great. So I'm addicted to YouTube, so I just sit at home and watch YouTube clips all day. And I came across a story about the Chilean miners, you know the Chilean miners? And it really got me to thinking like, what their situation was really and truly like. There's 32 of them, alright? They're stuck in a 30 by 20 space for 69 days. 69 fucking days? The first thing I think about, how'd they poop? Right? They had nothing to read. Nothing to read. When was the last time you took a dump without ESPN.com on your phone? Right? Good God. And then another one I saw was uh, the Indonesian smoking baby. Have you seen this fucking kid? If you haven't, he's two years old and he smokes two packs of cigarettes a day. Ridiculous, right? Ridiculously cute. He looks like a little man smoking a cigarette. I don't know what's cuter than that. Plus, he wears a bomber jacket and a diaper. Really? Mom of smoking baby, a diaper? He's old enough to cruise the streets of Jakarta, puffing on Paul Malls with his uncles, but you can't get him to not crap his pants anymore? Really? Mom of smoking baby? Ugh. Uh, like I said, I am 32, and all I'm at the age now where all my friends are starting to have babies. And it seems like every other day I'll get a new email at work of a new baby being born and pictures and all that kind of stuff. And that's fine and all, but I don't know if it's a new fad or what it is, but I seem to be getting these pictures directly out of my friends' wives. Literally. Umbilical cord hanging out. Nary a wipe down covered in crustified lady goo. I'm not, I swear to God, dude, it happens. Number one, it's fucking gross. And number two, if I get another goddamn naked baby email at work, I'm going to get fucking fired. <laughs> so they need to knock it off. Plus, if I see another naked baby with a bigger ding-dong than me, I'm going to jump off the fucking bridge. <laughs> Alright, I can't show those pictures to my wife. She'll be like, they, really? My buddy Jamal just had a baby. This kid had two fucking umbilical cords. You know how I know there's an Irish curse and an African gift? Jamal's baby's pictures. Guys, that's my time. Thank you very much. Enjoy the rest of the show.
Come on, Clayton. Pat Dalton, ladies and gentlemen, he's funny as shit. Come on, let him know he's funny. Yeah. He was talking about uh, he's a drunkie getting drunk. I'm a fucking drunkie. Yeah, yeah, I get blackout drunk. Yeah. Yeah, I get drunk. I get so drunk, I don't know what the fuck I did the next day. So I gotta like remember what I did the next day by what happens in the morning. Like if my head hurts a little bit, I drink beer. If it hurts more, I drink liquor. If it hurts real bad, I drink red wine. If my nose hurts, I did cocaine. And if my ass hurts, I didn't pay for it. So, all right, your next comedian coming to the stage—a very funny man, all the way now from Richmond, does shows all over the place. Give it up for my man Jesse Jarvis. Ah, oh, Wabi Sabi, thank you for having me inside here. Greatly appreciate that. So. Everybody having a good time tonight? Enjoying yeah. eating, drinking? Yeah. Tip the tip the wait staff. God God help you, you fucking tip your wait staff. Because <laughs> uh, it's rough out there, man. It's rough. I graduated college about a year ago. And what have I accomplished since then? I was given the employee of the month award at the catering job that I work at. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Until then, I didn't think it was possible that I could win something and lose at the same time. <laughs> it's like, oh, you got a degree in architecture? Enjoy your assistant management position at Cracker Barrel. <laughs> That's where you're at now. <laughs> College didn't prepare me for that kind of disappointment. It didn't. Actually, I take that back. I went to art school, so I guess it kind of did. It totally did. But I'm worried about how this whole catering thing is going to affect my high school reunion. Because of course I'm going to be there. All the rich, successful people are going to come up to me. Jesse, glad you can make it. How you been, buddy? Um, I've been, you know, I've been alright, but um, I'm obviously catering this event, so could you just like take these pigs in a blanket and just go, just go. Uh, just go. I'm going to just keep saying that as long as it keeps getting laughs. You guys are awesome. Uh, to, despite my pasty complexion, uh, I'm actually Native American, yeah, but not a very tough one, not a very tough one. My, my full-blooded relatives, they're very tall, they're very muscular, they look like a tomahawk a plant in half, and like, I look like this, and I still need a knife and a fork to cut my salads, but I will say, even though I'm not very tough, sometimes I get this desire to just shoot a fat pioneer woman in the back with a bow and arrow, you know, but I don't own a horse. Don't own a horse, so I gotta do it on the back of my Saturn. <laughs> then CNN gets wind of it, and all of a sudden become known as a trail of tears sniper. And I don't want that for my image. Nope. I was. It's <laughs> fucking awesome. I was because I was talking about this uh, one time in another city, and this big racist guy in the crowd just yells out, "That boy ain't Native American. That boy is 100 percent Jew." <laughs> And I would have said something, but I had already shit my pants. Because the serious scariest gonna stab me with like a replica Confederate sword he bought at the fair, so you just gotta leave that shit alone. God. Just uh, uh just like there's no there's no segues for a lot of this shit, so just like follow me, guys. <laughs> there's, this, there's this organization uh, recently that did a sign. About uh, they did a they did a study about signs to tell you that your husband's gay. Pat Dolan's wife, pay attention. Um, one sign to tell you that your husband's gay. He takes frequent business trips to big cities like San Francisco or Asia. So yeah, so forget about your husband going to. Japan, make a deal, pay for the orthodontist bill. He's just going there because body glitter's so much cheaper by the barrel there. <laughs> but here's the thing, though. You think that shit only happens in Asia? You're wrong. That shit starts on the plane. <laughs> Get a bunch of married businessmen on a flight, live in a big city like San Francisco, go to a bigger city like Asia, <laughs> you're telling them what can happen. Maybe they just buy something off the of Sky Mall. I don't know. Baby girl needs snuggie. <laughs> but... Speaking of, um, speaking of airlines, losing your virginity is weird. 
Um, and it never happens in that John Hughes 16 Candles kind of way where it's like, oh yeah, they fell in love and he came inside her and they lived happily ever after. No. But you know, sometimes at least some cool music's involved, you know? Maybe you lost to Usher or something. <laughs> Set the mood in the back of your dad's Range Rover, it just makes sense. Or maybe you just left the radio on and Smash Mouth and Chumbawamba's playing during your magical moments. <laughs> I actually lost it to an audio book. <laughs> it was Dennis Rodman who in Catcher in the Rye. <laughs> you laugh, we're in some kinky shit. Perfect for setting the moon in the back of a Prius. <laughs> some of yeah, somebody might think like, wait, Prius, that's kind of recent. This just happened the other week, so give me a break. Sorry. Sorry. But you know, you get a little older, relationships mature, you know. I, uh, but I will say though, every time I date a woman, I just kind of feel like she's settling for me though, you know? Because I'm, I'm always that guy, I'm like somewhere in their bottom five, you know? But to be fair, they don't hold that against me. But they do act like I'm this sort of charity case, like, by dating me, they're somehow doing good for the community. <laughs> like, honey, I like being with you. Those rich guys with the muscles, yeah, they're good at sex, but they get so boring. Your Star Wars memorabilia is charming. <laughs> Sweetheart, you realize you don't get a tax write-off by dating me, right? Wait, what? <laughs> that was a tax season joke. <laughs> Didn't go anywhere, but it's all right. Um, it's fine. Uh, wait, uh, just just out of curiosity, any women out there? Any all uh, into like dating older men? Is that, is that your thing? Any ladies out there? I, I, I hear it a lot at the shows. Here's the thing. Here's my thought on this. Just because a guy is old enough to have a couple marriages under his belt does not make him more mature than me. So stop rejecting me at the bar. It's like, what, I mean, what does he have that I don't? Alimony payments? You don't want that shit. You know? It's like, oh yeah, but this guy, he's accomplished so much, and he's reinvented himself just so he can accomplish so much more. Here's the thing, sweetheart. You did not just describe the perfect man, you just described RoboCop. <laughs> <laughs> RoboCop over you? But you think, uh, you know, he's got that shock of gray in his beard and that twinkle in his eye that makes you feel all warm and fuzzy inside? Here's the thing. That's not a twinkle in his eye, that's glycoma. <laughs> Think about it. All right, let's 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 set this back in the right direction, shall we? I um, I'm absolutely obsessed with Rush Limbaugh. Obsessed. Not like for any political thing. It's just Rush Limbaugh is like the Charlie Sheen of like talk radio at this point. I think. Yeah, we're getting topical on this shit. It's gonna get real. <laughs> It's like, yeah, it's like so many people look up to him, it's like, yeah, this is the guy who said, you know, Michael J. Fox is faking his Parkinson's, you know? <laughs> this is the guy who says that, I don't pay prostitutes for sex, I pay them to leave. <laughs> Actually, that was Charlie Shannon, I'm sorry. Um, but what, like, I, but, but, you know, Char Rush Limbaugh, you know, this is the guy who, like, will spend his evening snorting Oxycontin off the tits of a Denny's waitress. And people would just really look up to that guy. <laughs> By the way, uh, quick plug for Denny's. Um, they'll let you do that there. <laughs> but you gotta finish your Grand Slam first. That's the rule. You gotta finish your Grand Slam. The waitress comes to your table. She's like, Hey, hun! You clear off your plate. Let's just start hillbilly hairing off the tits. <laughs> Right there along my tattoo of Jeff Gordon naked grabbing a bull by the horns. Right there! <laughs> it's a very delicious late night menu. <laughs> Just let you know. Uh, I, I, what else is there? I mean, I think I'll get out of here on this. Um, I recently got a text message from a wrong number. And I knew it was a wrong number because the text just said, Hey girl. <laughs> Spelled G U R L. <laughs> yeah, G U R L. I asked who it was, and what I get in response is a picture message. <laughs> so I open it up, and it's a guy sitting on what I'm assuming is his mother's couch. 
Camouflage ball cap on, NASCAR wraparound shades on top of the hat. Kinda looks like a mixture of these two. Um, <laughs> but this guy's just rigged to fuckable, obviously. And other than the message, it just said, Joe. <laughs> but it was the wrong number, so I knew he wasn't into me or anything. <laughs> but uh, I sent a message back saying, Hey, uh, I think you got the wrong number, unless you're expecting a dude, but I'm not gay, so I don't know about this. I've never done this before. <laughs> But I was a little, was a little shy, so I sent him a picture of my redneck friend Steven with it, because I thought they'd be a good match. <laughs> but we didn't get a reply, so we got a little antsy. So we sent a follow-up message where it's my friend Steven eating a banana, <laughs> and I'm sitting next to him eating a chili dog, but her thumbs up are like this. She's like, I "Wish you were here." Anyway, guys, Wabi Sabi, thank you so much. You guys have a wonderful night. Enjoy the rest of the comedy. I love you all. Jesse Jarvis, let him hear it. Come out. We're rolling through this show. Y'all are a great fucking audience. <laughs>